Hi folks, Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath, and welcome to our this week's edition of BrightPath Live, the show we do every Thursday at 12 o'clock Central, talking about issues related to crisis management, business continuity, disaster recovery, global security, and intelligence. This week we're going to talk about the new American Society for Industrial Security, Workplace Violence Prevention, and Active Assailant Standard. This is a new, or I should say a revised standard from a standard that was actually published just about a decade ago in 2011 in a joint effort between the American Society for Industrial Security, this is the trade association for the physical security profession, and the Society for Human Resources Management, which is the professional association for HR managers uh, around the world. This time, uh, this, is only, this revision was only driven by um, ASIS uh, from a physical security standpoint, but was developed by a cross-functional group of leaders that touch security, law enforcement, human resources, psychology, threat assessment and management professionals, and many others that you would want to contribute to a standard like this. The original standard back in 2011 was really focused only on workplace violence prevention. This new standard began life in 2017 as an effort to create an annex to address the issue of active assailants or active shooters, We're just using a broader term of active assailant in this situation. So this, this standard revision started life as really an effort to add in uh, an annex about the active assailant issue and it grew to a rewrite of the existing standard and I think it got us to a much better product uh, overall that addresses a lot of different issues that have come up. Um, I was a member of the technical committee for the creation and edits of this standard. I served in that role for three years. We just wrapped up our work a few months ago as the standard went through its final voting uh, and approval processes by ASIS. But it is also a standard of the American, um, uh, of ANSI, the, the uh, American National Standards Institute. Um, so it is a you know, really a, a highly vetted and accepted document that you can use um, for workplace violence. The program, uh, or the standard rather, actually what it does is it delivers a set of vetted best practices that organizations can use to help build a workplace violence prevention and active assailant program, or can be used to enhance a current program that is already in place, uh, and certainly provides a number of options on how organizations can build and establish such a program. Um, the standard contains a number of important items, but I want to cover a few that really uh, kind of make up the, the core parts of the standard. The first is that the standard has a set of recommendations around, uh, programmatic recommendations around preventing acts of violence. And it covers everything from early detection to, um, you know, kind of what that response should look like as threats or concerning behavior is observed through the threat assessment process into mitigation plans, and then if necessary, into the response and recovery of an act of assailant issue of an actual violent act that has occurred. The standard covers how to establish the right policies, procedures, and training, um, really focused on helping employees understand what is threatening or concerning behavior in the workplace, and what should they do when they observe that. And of course, what we want them to do is raise their hand and report this behavior so that your threat assessment and threat management and mitigation processes can start to have an impact and, and hopefully deter or prevent an act of workplace violence or an act of assailant issue. The standard, as I mentioned, has a new annex covering uh, really soup to nuts on active assailant from preparation to training to exercises to response and recovery efforts that should be taken. We recognize in the standard that an active assailant incident can create a crime scene that will be disruptive to your workplace. It will re may require portions of the work area to be inaccessible, inaccessible for a period of time. Uh, you may have to have someone prepared to talk to the press. So we talk about the issue of having public information officers, PIOs, or having, you know, in, a, in the private sector, a communications team or leader who is able to be that interface with the press uh, and with, um, with law enforcement's PIO if that's necessary as you work through the situation. Um, it covers topics like how to notify families that their loved ones, family members may have been impacted by 
an active assailant incident. It talks about setting up and managing reunification centers where following the incident, family members can find their loved ones and you know, go through that whole family reunification process. The standard, I think, also most importantly, uh, of all of the things that have happened here, it incorporates a number of lessons learned from the time of the 2011 standard and what has transpired over the past nine years, not just in what we've learned about how to best detect, uh, prepare for, and manage and mitigate potential acts of workplace violence, but also what we've learned about managing active assailant situations that have impacted the private sector, uh, public events, uh, and public agencies as well. So there's a lot of information packed into a relatively brief standards document that can really help your organization establish, if you don't have, a workplace violence uh, prevention and intervention program. Or it also serves as a great document to, have, to help you look at your current program and see how you can mature that to better protect your facilities, your assets, your employees, and your customers um, through that process. The standard's really written in a way that it's applicable to all businesses, in all industries, in all geographies. The standard recognizes that even here in the United States, we have different laws from state to state about duty to care, about, in some cases, physical security uh, and safety requirements. And we have different firearm laws from state to state that may play a role in uh, how you establish elements of your workplace violence prevention and active assailant program. Um, but it also recognizes that different countries manage some of these situations with a different set of expectations, uh, particularly in terms of duty to care, about your role as an employer in protecting your employees. The standard also um, can really be applied to any type of building or facility. Uh, it just is just as applicable to an educational building, a K-12 school, an office environment, a manufacturing plant. Uh, my point in, in covering that is it doesn't really matter what your organization is. I think there's something to learn from what's in the new ASIS standard for workplace violence prevention and active assailant uh, intervention. The key idea in any standard like this is it serves as an industry guiding document, right? It gives you some ground truth on here in a perfect world in the model organization. Here's what we would like to see you do. Here's what a group of experts has outlined as, this is the standard for how you should do things. But every company is different, every facility is different. And so as you're looking at this as the model of what to do, you have to modify that to fit, how does your organization operate? How do you think about risks like this? What programmatic elements do you have in place that have helped you uh, to date? So those are the kind of thought processes I would encourage you to think about as you look at the standard. Remember that our key idea here um, in creating standards like this is we're giving you policies and procedures that have been established to try and prevent these kind of incidents from happening. Uh, we want to help employees in particular understand what does concerning or threatening behavior look like and what should they do about them when they occur. And what we want them to do is raise their hand and come forward and say, I've observed this concerning behavior and it it, I know what's concerning because I've been through the training and I understand what it is that I'm looking at. We want to have organizations have processes in place that help them understand and manage potential threats of workplace violence, threats to the organization or to individuals, and to mitigate any potential acts of violence before those acts occur. You can find the standard on the website for the American Society for Industrial Security, or ASIS, or as is, as some folks would say. That website is asisonline.org. You can go to the standards section, or you can just go to the shop, and you'll be able to find uh, links to the standards, this standard and other ASIS standards from there. If you're an ASIS member, this is free to read online as an ebook, or anyone can purchase a PDF or a soft cover copy of the standard. It's a, I think it's like 74 pages, so it's not a very long document to process. If managing threats, if this idea of, of how to prevent workplace violence is something you want to learn more about, here at Bright Path, we do offer a free master class on demand uh, on managing threats, uh, kind of four key ways to think about protecting your school, business, or nonprofit organization. You can find that on our website under uh, courses uh, or under our resources and webinars 
uh, tab there on our website. We also have a paid uh, workshop course, uh, the Managing Threats Workshop, which goes into a lot more detail and includes specific training on understanding threats, how to assess threats, how to build a threat management plan, and how to manage threats over time within your educational institute, office, uh, you know, business, or nonprofit organization. That's it for this edition of Bright Path Live. We'll be back next Thursday at 12 o'clock Central with another new episode. Be well. <laughs>